Welcome, I'm Tracy Smith and this is Here Comes the Sun, a closer look at some of the people, places and things we bring you every weekend on Sunday morning. Taylor Tomlinson may seem like an overnight success as the newest face on the late night scene, but she's been touring as a stand up comedian for over a decade. Luke Burbank caught up with her in Los Angeles ahead of the debut of At Midnight on CBS. I know my friends look at me and go, yeah, I'd probably focus on work if I was all alone. And I'm like, yeah, I'd probably have a bunch of kids if I had no talent. So we're all This special is different because it's me acknowledging the fact that I, I am a successful comedian, which felt sort of hard to say for a while. Not that anyone made me feel that way. I just felt that way in my own heart. Later in the show, Taylor Tomlinson on how she honed her comedic skills. Are you sort of from the last generation where you, you really built your career on touring, on your specials, you know? I mean, you're obviously really big on TikTok and you have a big social media presence, but like you, you built this career and you, you sort of honed your skills the sort of old fashioned way, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't really think there's any way to hone your skills as a stand-up other than performing a lot and going on the road. I really don't. I don't think you can do, you know, selfie videos on TikTok, build an audience, and then expect people to go see you on tour as a stand-up. Then, from stand-up comedy to a form of entertainment that's a little more up in the air, Connor Knighton takes us inside the International Juggling Association's annual festival. Oh, the competitions. There's a numbers competition who can juggle the most objects. There's a competition for the best overall act with prizes for teams and individuals scored on a mix of skill and showmanship. There's a battle night where two contestants armed with three clubs try and one-up each other. That's all coming up right here on Here Comes the Sun. Taylor Tomlinson actually got her start in comedy in church, of all places. Her self-deprecating style has led to three Netflix stand-up specials, in which she tackles heavy themes, including losing her mom to cancer at a young age and her bipolar diagnosis. Here's Luke Burbank. Okay, so this is stage That's 30. That's where we're going to be. It's Taylor Tomlinson's first day on the Paramount lot, and the set for her new late-night show, After Midnight, is... Well, non-existent. That, that's where your show's going to be happening. Yeah, that's. I'm telling you, nothing's done yet. Like I. I thought that's where they were storing chairs. I'm telling you, like it's. Everyone's like asking me. I'm like, I don't know yet. We're working on it. And Tomlinson, as the host of that new late night show, the one that has yet to start taping, a show that will follow none other than Stephen Colbert himself on CBS. She's still really figuring things out. Allegedly, we can fit through this, but we're going to find okay. out together. Uh, you're good over oh, here. Oh, wow. All right. Look hey. at that. Wouldn't nice. it be great if I just totaled <laughs> this golf cart like before I even started working here? At this point, not even a golf cart mishap could derail Tomlinson's fast and furious career. My career is going very well right now. Yeah, that, that's like in the middle. So I think we just need to pick which angle we want. She spent December editing her third Netflix special, Have It All. Nobody gets to have it all. And then I saw Hugh Jackman in person. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, I guess you could have it all, but there's none left because God gave it all to Hugh. But if watching the 30-year-old on stage or screen makes it seem like her career success was a foregone conclusion, to hear Taylor Tomlinson tell it, it wasn't. I grew up super sheltered and very Christian, so I didn't even really know what stand-up was until, like, middle school. Tomlinson is a self-professed introvert who first got started with stand-up comedy at, of all places, her church. All my jokes have always been really rooted in my real life. When I first started, obviously, I was very clean. I was 16 years old, very sheltered. Like, I, I mean, I hadn't dated. I hadn't had sex. Like, I hadn't done much of anything and so I think the jokes I was doing were probably a pretty observational and b um, very self-deprecating probably to like 
a point where it might have been a little sad, actually. I know that my friends both envy and pity me simultaneously, just like I envy and pity them. I know my friends look at me and go, yeah, I'd probably focus on work if I was all alone. And I'm like, yeah, I'd probably have a bunch of kids if I had no talent. So we're all... This special is different because it's me acknowledging the fact that I, I am a successful comedian, which felt sort of hard to say for a while. Not that anyone made me feel that way, I just felt that way in my own heart. Tomlinson lost her mother to cancer at the age of eight and says as a teen, she used stand-up as an outlet for writing, performing, and eventually working through her grief. I started writing jokes about losing my mom when I was much younger, but they were very like hit or miss as far as how often they would work because I was doing them, you know, like on sunset Friday night and everybody's like, we're kind of here trying to get laid. Um, can I say that? Oops. I want to just give that version of you a little side hug. I know. Those jokes eventually found their way into her second Netflix special, Look At You. I know dead mom jokes make people uncomfortable. I know that. And if you are uncomfortable, I don't know what to say. You should have worked harder, so it was you up here. Few work as hard as Tomlinson does or reveal as much in their comedy as she did when she shared a difficult diagnosis on stage. I'm so glad I know that I'm bipolar now. I mean, I have the right meds. I got a mood ring. I'm handling it. <laughs> but when I first found out, it was a very tough pill to swallow, and I've swallowed a lot of pills. Because when you first find out something like that, you're like, oh man, am I gonna tell anybody? Should I tell anybody? And if I do tell people, am I hot and or talented enough to be an inspiration? All joking aside, her openness was an inspiration to many, as has been her directness about how helpful therapy has been in her life. I really want to find out if I'm my therapist's favorite client. You can't just ask, they won't tell you, I've tried. Tomlinson's new show, After Midnight, will feature herself and other comics riffing on the latest updates from a little place called the internet. She's hoping it's television's equivalent of comfort food. There will be memes, emojis, laughs, murder. What, no, no, there's no murder. Who put murder in here? We will get that fixed before we air. No murder! I, mean, I don't know, murder's pretty hot right now. So what is it that you think will be the biggest learning curve for you about this new gig after midnight? Honestly, the, the thing I'm most nervous about, and this is sort of a lame, uncool answer, I am naturally very introverted, and it's something I've worked on a lot over the years. The thing I'm most nervous about is like, the social aspect of it and how many people I'm gonna be interacting with and, and like being on in that way mm. because that is a, a skill that doesn't come to me naturally. But again, I feel like I'm in a place now where it is something that I am better at and wanna to continue to keep getting better at. Um, but it is the thing I'm most nervous about, weirdly enough. But something that does seem to come to Tomlinson naturally and that's served her both on stage and off is finding the humor in some of life's most difficult situations. If I can write a joke about something that was sad or hard or uncomfortable for me, it sort of neutralizes that event and makes me go, oh, that was a joke, that's a joke now. That's not like a bad thing that happened, that's a joke. Like I got, it makes me feel like I got something out of it that I know you can't like hold a joke in your hands, but it has the same feeling because you can put it in a special or on a late night set or even if it's just a clip on Instagram. I'm so grateful that I have an outlet like Stand Up to do that with. But you should go to therapy too. An introvert who goes on stage in front of thousands, a once sheltered kid who's now flying high in public without a net. Taylor Tomlinson might not have it all just yet. The oh, moment. he moved. But she seems well on her way. Up next, an exclusive excerpt from Luke Burbank's chat with Taylor Tomlinson, something you can only see right here on Here Comes the Sun. Stay with us. That being said, if I was like nine and I saw someone like me doing this, I would think it was really cool. 
As promised, here's more from Luke Burbank and Taylor Tomlinson. What was going through your mind when you found out that you were going to be this new late night host of this show? Well, that Zoom, I thought, was like another interview, and it was like very last minute. So you could see in that photo, like my hair is wet, like I got out of the shower, I have like a hat on. I really wasn't, I wasn't prepared to find out then because we had done the screen test, I don't know, maybe like five days before or something, and I just wasn't, I didn't know when we were going to find out. So I wasn't, I wasn't prepared to find out on that meeting. I thought it was another follow-up interview. And he started that meeting very much like it was. Like, they kind of faked me out a little, where they were like, yeah, no, you did great on the tape, uh, but I wasn't there, so I want to ask you a few more questions. And kind of did the whole thing where they made me answer something else and then sort of revealed that they gave me the job, which was uh, how they got that photo of me looking genuinely surprised. You talk about talking to particularly women after your shows and seeing how the way you are on stage gives them a feeling about themselves. Have you thought about this new job where you're gonna be the only woman in late night and you're also younger than the other hosts who are out there? Am I? I mean, no, I'm I, I guess, do you think, a lot has been made about the fact that you are a, a woman in a type of job happening in TV that right now there aren't any other women doing. Right. And you're also a young woman. Uh, how do you think about that uh, and, and how you know, you're gonna be, like there's gonna be a Taylor Tomlinson of the future who's nine years old right now and they're gonna be watching you on TV or watching you on YouTube the day after you're on TV, you know? <laughs> to be honest, like, by that one. <laughs> you, I mean, how does, that, how does that feel for you and how do you think about that? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, again, it's not like I'm like the first woman in late night. Like there's been Lily Singh and Chelsea Handler and like Joan Rivers obviously. Like there's, you know, I'm not like whatever. Um, not to downplay it, but I, yeah, I don't know. Somebody else asked me about this recently and how I felt about being like the only woman currently in late night. And I was like, I don't know. I think, I don't think I thought about it like that when I was interviewing for this. I, I just thought it sounded fun and I thought I could be good at it. That being said, if I was like nine and I saw someone like me doing this, I would think it was really cool. And that makes me feel good, so. Are you sort of from the last generation where you really built your career on touring, on your specials, you know? I mean, you're obviously really big on TikTok and you have a big social media presence, but like you, you built this career and you, you sort of honed your skills the sort of old fashioned way, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't really think there's any way to hone your skills as a stand-up other than performing a lot and going on the road. I really don't, I don't think, you can do, you know, selfie videos on TikTok, build an audience, and then expect people to go see you on tour as a stand-up. I think they're very different things. Mm -hmm. I think what social media has just done is given comics a place to put their material and like put clips of their live shows to entice people into coming to see them. Mm -hmm live in person because everything's better live it just is no but you talk a lot about your about your your sort of romantic life i'm wondering how does that play out when you're actually in your romantic life you know with people who are obviously aware that whatever goes on could make its way into your set how do you how do you navigate that how do you keep the stuff that really needs to be private private while also mining your real life for stuff particularly in the romance department yeah. Oh, I always ask people before I do jokes about them. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Um, maybe when I was much younger. I think when I was much younger, if I broke up with somebody, I was like, I can say whatever I want. And again, now it's more so like that happened in college, and it didn't, um, because yeah, I don't want it to be obvious or anything. And I wouldn't do anything like mean spirited. But if I'm in a relationship or seeing somebody, especially, I I do say like, hey, I wrote this joke. Are you okay with this? Because I, you know, I don't want to be, it's just not worth, to me, and I do it with my family too, like, to me it's not worth compromising a relationship of any kind, a friendship, a familial relationship, a romantic relationship for a minute mm -hmm. of laughs. Like, I, I just don't think that that's the healthy way to mm -hmm. go about it. So I'm really, I'm really careful about it, actually. What are you hoping, other than you know, the show being successful, what are you sort of hoping, what are you hoping the show ends up becoming? I hope the show ends up becoming. I hope the show is like a nice, 
escape for people, I guess. Like, I, I want it to just be like a way to relax at the end of the day. I want it, honestly, my dream is for this show to be a comfort show for people. Like, it's gonna be on four nights a week. Like, if I were a high schooler who was chronically online and like loved comedy, like this, I would be obsessed with this show. So that's what I'd really like. I'd like for it to be something where people go, that's my comfort show. That's the thing I like, can't wait to watch at the end of a long day at work uh, that I know I'm gonna laugh at. Up next, it's a juggle. Welcome back. The art of juggling goes back thousands of years, and it still delights and fascinates us today. Connor Knighton explores the diverse skills on display at the International Juggling Association's Festival. Are you going to post that or one of those? Balls up! Down! Go! When you get a bunch of jugglers together, things can get out of hand pretty quickly. Meet the IJA. That one ball is going to do all the work. All right. The International Juggling Association. A club for people who love clubs. And balls. And rings. And whatever this is. Or whatever these people are doing. Even after spending a few days in their midst, I'm not sure I could define juggler. I thought I knew what juggling was. And then I came here. And there's a lot of things I wouldn't consider juggling that seem to fall under the juggling umbrella. Absolutely. When most people think of juggling, they think three balls back and forth between the two hands. While that does fit part of the definition of juggling, we've found that there are many other things that can fall under this umbrella term. Iksuro Pachaki is the director of the IJA's annual festival, held this past year in South Bend, Indiana. He suggests object manipulators as a potentially more helpful way of thinking about the wide array of performers that join forces at the gathering. The main thing about this event is getting together with other jugglers. That's why everyone is here. But we also have the competitions. Oh, the competitions. There's a numbers competition, who can juggle the most objects. There's a competition for the best overall act with prizes for teams and individuals scored on a mix of skill and showmanship. There's a battle night where two contestants armed with three clubs try and one-up each other. During joggling, competitors race around a track. There's even combat juggling, where the goal is to mess up your opponent while keeping your own clubs up in the air. But no one's going for the jugular here. It's a pretty friendly bunch. It's a very supportive community. You don't always get that in other communities. David Kane is able to support himself as a full-time juggler. That's uncommon. Most of the attendees here are part-time or hobbyists. I do cruise ships, I do circuses, I do schools, I do corporate stuff. I specialize in churches, actually. Professionally, Kane is known as the juggler for Jesus. You see, Jesus died. But three days later, he rose from the dead. Amen. An Egyptian tomb nearly 4,000 years old contains the earliest known evidence of juggling. These hieroglyphics in Benai Hassan depict three women juggling. Here in the U.S., juggling has traditionally skewed very male. The IJA was founded in 1947 by a group of men at the International Brotherhood of Magicians Convention. They didn't want to be with the magicians anymore. There was the... <laughs> Is there a juggler-magician feud? Well, magicians very much are secretive. They don't mm. want to teach you anything. And the jugglers said, to heck with this. Laura Shubb, who juggles under the name Ms. Tilly, used to be one of the few female jugglers in attendance. Today, she teaches workshops to a group that's gotten much more diverse. Put one foot in front of the other like this. If there's one thing this group has in common, it may be intelligence. I would have to say that all of us are a pretty darn smart bunch. Hmm. You, you cannot be stupid and be a juggler because of, a, of what it takes that's happening in your mind. Your mind does not want to accept it because everything in juggling crisses crosses like that. In the learning of it, your body is almost resisting it. All right. She even tried to teach me 
Take it right. down. All right, all right, all right. Although I will not be winning any right, competition right. soon. Left, right. Throw, throw, throw. That's it, that's yeah. it. Throw, 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 that's it, that's it, that's it. All right, all right, something. That's it. Professional jugglers like Wes Peden make it look easy, but you'll notice that even the best of the best make mistakes. Rarely does a routine go by without some sort of screw up. That's when it's nice to be surrounded by an audience of supportive peers. People who understand the constant ups and downs of this world, who can sympathize with the struggle, and who can celebrate the sweet success of a well-executed juggle. I'm Tracy Smith. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you here next time on Here Comes the Sun.